think about materials as active and alive, where would that lead us in sense of everyday objects, everyday rituals, like how the society is formed? My name is Emilia Thicka. I am a designer, researcher and filmmaker. And my practice is based on a field of design, which is called speculative design. My name is Lea Perrodin, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Cluster of Excellence Matters of Activity at Humboldt Universität zu Berlin. And I am the co-leader of the project Collective Materials. My vision for this project is to co-create a space where people from the public and researchers from our clusters can exchange on um, eye level. Collective Materials is a project where we engage together with different people from the public about questions of materials, of our material futures. And we want to ask um, each other how the materials of our futures could look like, what relationship we have to them. You know, in modernity, you took the materials as something passive and perhaps even passivated them with, with technology, if you think about plywood or, or concrete. And, and, and we were trying to imagine like, how the future would look like if you would take the materials as active and as alive and with their own agency that you could perhaps collaborate with. So this kind of different relation to materials was the core idea of the workshop. So the participants of the workshop should imagine what kind of everyday objects of this bio-inspired world with active materials or living technologies could look like. And later on we kind of went from more abstract ideas towards this kind of everyday objects that would be then exhibited in the exhibition and you know that would then encapsulate how how the speculative future could look like. So it was kind of a mixture of, of first thinking things individually and then bringing that into a group and thinking further as a group. We just had our first public speculation event with Collective Materials, so there are some quite um, fresh expressions from this experience. We were gathering in small groups and we didn't know each other before, so we were just this um, ad hoc community of speculators. So usually you take scientific research that is not yet developed as a technology, you accelerate it, into the future and imagine what kind of societal impacts this technology might have in the future when it has become an everyday application of the technology. And you take these ideas in today as objects, as materialized ideas of that societal change. So that's kind of the, the classical pattern of, of, of how to do speculative design. In the essence of speculative design, there's also this idea that it should never become kind of a pinned down method, because it is that kind of field of design that goes against that idea, you know? So it is kind of the rebel in design. So when it becomes a method that, you know, it, it kind of loses something. So it should be always in shift, always in change. That's kind of the essence of this way of making. I'm really interested of bringing speculative design as something that can engage people and have this idea of more inclusive scientific futures. We really see some great potential in applying the method of speculative design for science communication because it takes the process of how we take a piece of research or some um, um, findings as an impulse, but it also asks about attached um, questions that are yet unthinkable. What I really like about speculative design in this sense is that it um, challenges us to um, step a bit out of um, our habits and our um, usual, usual way of doing things and maybe even leave behind a bit like this idea in our self-understanding as researchers. 
What is this new approach to materials about? We are using the method of speculative design as a means um, for science communication. Science communication is really at the center stage of this endeavor. We need public engagement and um, an exchange on questions of materiality and material futures because they apply to all of us. The science communication in, in a classical sense has been about educating people about science. And, um, you know, within this project, um, we thought that maybe we could find a way where the participants could be in a more active role. Through speculative design, you can really make these ideas and futures and questions uh, tangible that people might have. It's not about finding solutions, it's rather about asking new questions. We believe that this new approach is also necessary to um, tackle some of the most pressing and urgent um, ecological challenges of our time.